In today's session, we will go over the steps needed to activate your very first DB2 Tools level set. My name is Andrew Badgley. I'm the lead product owner for the DB2 Tools value stream here at Broadcom. So what is a level set? A level set is a PTF. It was introduced uh, conceptually as part of continuous delivery. A level set PTF prereqs all prior PTFs since the previous level set PTF. Thus, by applying a level set PTF, you are ensuring that all maintenance is current in your products up to that point. Also, with the introduction of a level set PTF, a, the product version string has been expanded. Now for DB2 Tools, instead of just seeing 20.0 as your product version string, you will now start seeing 20.0 dot and then what your level set value is. Also with DB2 Tools, the level set PTF may introduce additional functionality once that level set has been activated. And activation of a level set is what we will be discussing today. Um, DB2 Tools has actually published its first level set PTF. That level set is 20.0.01. And if you're interested in the additional functionality that can be activated with this level set, I will direct you to our product documentation online. For today's discussion on how to activate a level set, I want to go over what our environment is going to look like. We will, I, we will have two LPARs running on a Sysplex, and we will have an X manager running on each LPAR. Those two X managers are participating in the same X manager group. Um, if you are unfamiliar with what an X manager group is, don't worry. We will discuss X manager groups in more detail after the level set activation portion of this presentation. Now I'd like to switch out of uh, presentation mode and actually go to the 3270 environment and show you the activation steps. To begin with, I'm going to start up one of our X managers. You can see we already have one running. The reason for this is I want to show that after applying the maintenance for the level set PTF, your X managers will start up just as they always have. I look at the job, we will see some additional messages, however, such as X Manager has not been set up to use the configuration file, as well as CF list structure is not defined. Um, those are expected messages now because we have not uh, set up our configuration file and we have not uh, added and created our coupling facility list structure. X Manager will start up. And, and process as normally. However, until those things are addressed, you will not be able to activate to a new level set. And that is why when you look at your X Manager level set status, you know, we will see that our active level set is 20.0.00, our maintenance is 20.0.01, and our highest active level set is 20.0.00. So how do we how do we address our configuration file and coupling facility list structure? Well, to do that, we will go into our post install process under X Manager configuration. We can select option two, customize. Select our PTI sys member. Then choose X Manager customization. We've added three new steps to our X Manager customization. The steps two and three deal with our coupling facility list structure needs, and uh, step four is for X Manager configuration file setup. The coupling facility list structure is something that only needs to be done once for your Sysplex. Your X Manager configuration file will need to be done for each X Manager that you have running. So first, let's address our coupling facility list structure. 
Step two, we will define it. Here we see instructions on what we need to do to define our coupling facility list structure. We need to copy the list structure statement and merge it with your existing coupling facility resource manager policy statements. This is the structure statement that you need to copy. Update the pre-F list parameter in the structure statement to specify the coupling facility name that will use this the structure. Here is the pre-F list parameter that you will need to update and provide your coupling facility name. If more than one coupling facility will use it, separate the names with commas, such as, you know, CF name one, comma CF name two. Once you've updated your Coupling Facility Resource Manager policy. We're in the IBM Administrative Data Utility, IXC MIAPU, to merge the policy statements and, and then also make sure that job completes normally. You need to then reactivate the CFRM policy by issuing the following command. And you need to verify that the CR, CFRM policy is updated with the newly added structure. Once the structure has been defined, you can come back into your post install customization and allocate the coupling facility list structure. Verify that the appropriate values in the job statement are correct. And then you should just be able to submit the job. Once the job is submitted and completed successfully, your coupling facility list structure will have been defined and allocated. Let's take a look and see what that means for our X managers. Let me exit out of our X manager job. And I will stop both X managers because in order to pick up the changes to the coupling facility, we will need to stop and restart our X managers. Okay, now we will restart them. I'm going to look at our job now. You see that our expenditure still has not been set up for use, you know, set up to use the configuration file. Um, however, our coupling facility list structure is defined and allocated, and we are connected to it and using, using it. Our level set status is the same as it was before. Now, are we ready to activate to our new level set? Well, let's find out. We can do use one of our new X Manager modify commands. Let's test. Level set and then 20.0.01. Scroll down, see a new output table. We have some messaging. Level set 20.01 is not eligible for activation. One or more active X managers are incomplete. We look at our status. Both of our X managers are still in an incomplete status. They are incomplete um, because they require an X manager configuration file. So. We do need to create our X Manager configuration files before we can uh, activate to a new level set. So we can go back to our post install X Manager customization 
and define our X Manager configuration files. To do that, we will use step four. Here, we provide our high level qualifier and the LPAR name of our X Manager and the X Manager ID. Is my X Manager ID is this. Now that I have set my LPAR name, my XMAN ID, and my high-level qualifier, hit enter, and I need to review this job and to make sure that everything is appropriate, and then I can submit it. Here you can see that I will be creating a vSAM data set named, here's my high-level, my XMAN ID, and my LPAR. Go ahead and submit this. I come back and I'll change my LPAR and allocate for my second X manager. And now that I've allocated my X manager coupling facility, or excuse me, my X manager configuration files, I still need to be able to tell the X managers where to look to find their X manager configuration files. And we do that by updating their the X Manager parameter file. To do that, I come in and edit the XMAN PARM member of the CDBA PXMP data set. Here you'll see that I currently have a parameter defining the group that my X Manager will, X managers will use. And I will talk more about that in a, you know, at the end of our active level of session. But I can also add the control file high level qualifier high level qualifier parameter. And if I go in and grab my high level qualifier, paste it here. This now tells my all the X managers using this X manager PARM file to use this high level qualifier to find its configuration file. Then we'll also use the, the LPAR and XMAN ID to build out the rest of the data set name. So now I need to stop and restart my X managers again. I will also mention at this point that. You do not have to stop and start your X managers for each of the coupling facility definition and the configuration file create, you know, steps. You can have your X managers up and running, define and allocate your coupling facility list structure and allocate and connect in all of your X manager configuration files without stopping and starting your X managers. And then once you have all of that work done, um, you can then just, you know, stop and start your X managers one time. I did them in separate steps so that you can see um, the, the results of the test level set and, and the progress being made there. Let's look at our job output, environment initialization for the X Manager configuration file has started. This is the file name. We are connected to the coupling facility list structure. Everything is looking good. So let us do a test of our level set to see if we can activate.
found. Here we see that LSAT 20.0.01 is eligible for activation. Both X managers are active. Their maintenance is 01, and they are eligible. So now let's do an activation. And it's a modify command. So the activation was successful. And we can see from our output that our X managers are still active. Their maintenance levels are 0, 01, but now our active level set is 20.0.01, where previously it was 20.0.00. Now, how can we be sure that by activating this level set we are ready? and able to take advantage of the new functionality introduced by 20.0.01. Well, we added a little bit of a verification feature as part of our show level set modify command that uh, will help verify this. So if we do a show level set, We get the output from our show level set command, which has the table you're familiar with. And we have this message here saying that X manager level set 20.0.01 or higher is active. So that is an indication to us that the new functionality introduced with 20.0.01 is, is up and running and available. Now, Let's say that you are unhappy with 20.0.01 and you want to go back to the behavior of 20.0.00. You can activate back down to a lower level set, and I'll do that now. Level set activation was successful, and our active level set is back down to zero, 00. We do keep track of the highest active level set you've been at, and that still shows zero, 01. Now, how do we know that this has been successful and that our products are no longer using the new functionality from zero, 01? Well, let's do the show level set command again. So show level set command, and you'll notice we no longer see the message indicating that we have activated to a level set of 20.0.01 or higher. So these are the steps that are necessary for you to activate to a higher level set or a lower level set. Hope this has been helpful. Now that we have gone over what is required to activate to a different level set, I'd like to talk more about uh, X Manager groups. So let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. What is an X Manager group? Well, um, when your X Manager is running with parameter Xs equal to yes, this enables cross system communication support. This allows X Managers to communicate with each other even if they're on different LPARs. Um, cross system communication is limited to within a, a sysplex, so an X manager will not be able to communicate with X managers on, different sys, on a different sysplex. X manager communication is further limited to X managers within the same group. 
Um, by default, all X managers running Xs equal to yes on the same version of DB2 tools are in the same group. So for example, all X managers running with a runtime library of our 19.0 uh, version will be in a, the same group and all X managers running with a runtime version of 20.0 will be in the same group. The group parameter can be used though to override and control which X managers communicate with each other. Now let's talk about why is that so important going forward with level set activation. Given the default X manager group configuration, if you have X managers that are that you use in a QA environment running on the same sysplex that you have X managers that you use to run your production environments. Um, you may have those X managers still today communicating with each other. And because they are in the same X manager group, because they're using the default group, um, activation of a level set is at the group level. So that means that even as I roll out new maintenance to my, my QA X managers, and I do the, the compares and binds and get those X managers ready with the new maintenance applied, I cannot activate a level new level set for those X managers because the rest of the group does not have the supporting maintenance yet. So I have to go and apply the maintenance to the rest of the group. These are my production X managers. Apply the, do the, run the compares and binds and get everything ready. Now that they're all at this stage, I can activate new functionality for the entire X manager group. However, this introduces new functionality both in your QA environment, you know, X managers and your production X managers, which may not be something that you want. So if this is a situation in your environment, you may want to look at a, a two X manager group, you know, scenario where your QA X managers are in a separate group from your production X managers. This will allow you to apply your maintenance to your QA X managers, do the compares and binds and activate the new functionality introduced by that level set um, without impacting and changing the behavior of your production X managers, even though they exist on the same LPARs and within the same sysplex. Then once you're happy with the behavior and you feel it's, you're comfortable with the behavior changes, you can roll the maintenance out to your production X managers, do the compares and rebinds there on those DB2s and activate the new functionality for those X managers. And this concludes our walkthrough on how to activate your first level set. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you for your time and have a great day.